Okay, hello, Facebook. All right. Uh, sorry, I am a few minutes late. Uh, as always, it was technology. What else is new? That happens all the time now, right? Uh, <laughs> so it's like every week there's some type of new technological issue that I'm dealing with. So uh, I'm going to get in the face of the camera here. So I'm sorry for being uh, slightly late, but I'm here now. So praise God for that. All right. <clears throat> so let's take it from the top. What's my motto? Okay. God already told you what was going to happen if you had just listened to his prophets. Okay. So if you're coming on this broadcast live, please like and share uh, so we can get the word out to other people. If you want to support me, there's uh, on my Periscope, there's a paypal.me link in my Periscope profile. And then on Facebook Live, I have my paypal.me link and also Amazon Smile. Amazon Smile is where you can donate a portion of the proceeds from Amazon sale to your favorite not-for-profit charity. Okay, and I'm still working on getting my music set up. I know I say that every week, but I am. Uh, how you find me online is you always hashtag everything. I always hashtag everything I do with hashtag PDT. So that's the quickest way to find me. My regular broadcast time is now, Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. And then on the second Thursday of every month, I do a teaching called No More Genies, where I address genie concept, okay? And it's been uh, really powerful because genie concept has messed a lot of people up. I even um, have on my Facebook page a couple of news articles where uh, I'm referring to things that people did going to religious extremes, and they ended up really, really messing themselves up. And in one case, uh, a boy died. So genie concept is no joke. So that's why I teach so hard on it, because I want to deliver us. I want the Lord to deliver us through proper teaching and understanding of his word and through revelation of his spirit on how to get away from genie concept and how to, to believe the things about God that are right and true and to understand that God is a person and we need to know his word and we need to know his voice. And this is a personal relationship. You need to be doing what the Lord told you to do. Okay, very, very important. But anyway, so all that is on the second Thursday of each month. Each month. So today is my regular 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, a live prophetic word broadcast. And so let's get into the word for today. Quick word of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thanking you for your prophetic word. Thanking you for your deliverance. Thanking you for greater words of wisdom, words of knowledge, and greater understanding. I ask, oh God, that you be in the midst of this broadcast, because this is about you. This is about hearing from you. And when you give us the words to edify our soul and give us correction and instruction, oh God, then we can make the right choices, and then we will be victorious if we listen to you and obey you. And I thank you for it, and I thank you for the opportunity to be a servant in your kingdom. In Jesus' name, I pray, according to his righteousness, his blood, uh, and faith in his name. Amen. All right. So today's prophetic word is twice as much. Okay. Twice as much. Twice as much. That's today's prophetic word is twice as much. So you say, well, what do you mean by that? Okay. Let's go to our foundational scripture. And our foundational scripture is Job chapter 42, verse 10. The book of Job, that's in the Old Testament, okay? Uh, chapter 42, which is the last chapter, and verse 10. I'm going to read a couple of different translations. So Job 42.10 out of the King James Bible says, And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. New American Standard, the Lord restored the fortunes of Job when he prayed for his friends. And the Lord increased all that Job had twofold. Uh, New International Version, Version. After Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes and gave him twice as much as he had before. And the Berean Study Bible says, after Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his prosperity and doubled his former possessions. Now, that's the word for today. So what are we uh, supposed to learn from that? So let's look at that word uh, in, the, in the Hebrew when it says, after Job had prayed, 
after Job had prayed, that word there is palau, palau, that strong concordance, number 6419. And it means to pray, it means to intercede, it means to intervene, okay? It means to make supplication, it means to meditate. Why is that so important? Why is that so important? Well, in this particular story, Job's friends had said a lot of things about God that weren't true, okay? And the Bible says that God said his wrath was kindled against his friends. What that means is that the Lord was upset. They had provoked God to anger because they had said some things about God that weren't true. They had basically told Job that all that stuff had come upon him because he must have done something wrong and, and God didn't know what he was doing and there must be some kind of judgment and blah, 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 blah. And God was cruel or God was mean or, or you know, it was about negativity. And all that stuff that came on Job was from the devil. That was the devil attacking that wasn't God. And so the Lord was upset that his religious friends had blamed the work of the devil on God and had misunderstood what he was going through and had counseled him wrongly. And they just messed up all across the board. So the Bible says that Job, so God told them that if Job prayed for them, that God would turn away his wrath from judging them because God would accept his prayers. So all that's in uh, the book of Job. So when it said after Job had prayed or interceded for his friends, what's the principle there that we can learn? The principle there that we can learn is, is that that's why it's so important to pray for other people. Because when you're praying for other people, you're actually storing up favor in your account. When you're asking God to have mercy on and to enlighten and to, when you're inter interceding for other people, okay, when you're interceding for other people, that means you're asking God to have mercy on them and keep his hand of grace and mercy and favor on them. So when the devil comes at them, they can still get to victory. Well, remember, God's law is always you reap exactly what you sow. So when you pray and you intercede and you're praying for the good fortune of others, then that adds up to good fortune that's going to come back on your account. That's another reason that the Lord told us to bless our enemies and not curse them, which you have to do in the spirit. We can't do that in the natural. That's not our natural reaction to our enemies. Our natural reaction to our enemies is to hate back the people that hate us. But the Lord says when you bless them, one of the reasons the Lord tells you to bless people that hate you is not to say that what they're doing is okay, but so that you will begin to sow seeds of blessings on others. And when you begin to sow seeds of blessings on others, then that means that's what's gonna come back to you. So you're actually investing in your own future. So when the devil's after, so when the devil's after other people, when you pray and intercede, or when judgment is gonna come, when you pray and intercede, Okay, you're actually storing up favor and, and blessing and good fortune to your account because you reap what you sow. That's why the Bible makes a point of saying that after Job had prayed for his friends, after he'd interceded, after he'd invested into their account, asking God for favor for them to spare them from judgment, then what happens next? Then it said the Lord restored. Okay, that word restored there in the Hebrew is shub. Shub, that's strong 7725, and it means to turn back or, re or return, to answer again, okay? So what does that mean? It means that God turned his prosperity back, turned his possessions back. He answered him with twice as much as he had before, okay? Now, the word there, his prosperity, in the Hebrew, that word is Shebuth. Shabuth, that's strong, 7622, and it means captivity or captives, fortune or fortune. So what does that mean? That means just what it says. It means the state of your life. Uh, if you're in bondage, if you're in, if you're in, if you're in captivity, or your fortune, what kind of fate has befallen you? So the Bible says that after Job prayed for his friends, the Lord uh, turned again, turned back his fortune, his fortunes, his captivity, the state of his life. And then what happened? And God doubled, that word there in the Hebrew is Yosaf, 3254 in Strong's Concordance, Yosaf, add, add to more, added, adding, adds, again, another, okay? So it means that God doubled, God added, uh, doubled his former possessions, okay? Uh, let's look up former possessions, that word there is coal. Uh, in the uh, Strong's, that's 3605, and it says all, all for every, all his and every, all his everything, all it's the entire, all being every, all the everywhere, all the throughout. 
all your concerning everything, <laughs> okay? So the Bible is pretty clear in the use of that word. So in other words, what that means is that every single thing that Job had, okay, and everything that the devil had attacked, God gave him back twice as much as he had before. Twice as much. So what does that have to do with us for today? If you do what Job did, you get what Job got. <laughs> Good God Almighty. What a blessing. So what does that mean? That means that some of y'all, listen to me right now, you have been through hell. These last couple of weeks, these last couple of months for you have been hell and high water like you've never seen because the dragon opened his mouth and breathed fire on you. And the dragon just came straight at you. And when the devil comes at you, he don't care nothing about your kids. He don't care nothing about your money. He don't care nothing about nothing. His goal is to destroy you in as many ways as he can. Okay? And when the dragon opens his mouth and breathes fire like that, you just feel like you've got trouble on every side. And some of y'all, listen to me right now, have been through hell in these past weeks and months. Okay? Well, the Spirit of God stopped by to tell you that if that's been your lot, it's over. <laughs> so what God wants you to do is believe that word and receive that word and now intercede. So some good seeds of mercy and grace uh, of intercession for your friends and for others. So into praying for the good fortunes of others. And if you do what Job did, you'll get what Job got. If you've been through hell and high water these past couple of weeks or, weeks or months, the Spirit of God want to let you know that's over with, okay? And another thing you need to know, if that's been the case, you need to know that there are some very specific lessons that God wanted you to learn from the experience. Whenever the devil comes at you hard like that, whenever the devil just unleashes hell and high water on you, his goal is to destroy you, to steal, kill, and destroy, to take everything that you have. That's the devil's goal. But what is God's goal? What is God doing when stuff like that is happening in your life? The answer to that question is God is using the trial. God is using the tribulation to teach you some things. Now, the reason that's so important is because uh, I, I started to say I'm sad to say, but the, the raw truth of it is there are just some things in life that pleasure cannot teach you. Let me say that one more time. There are just some things in life that pleasure cannot teach you. Okay, they just, there's just some things in life that pleasure can't teach you. Some things you're only going to learn through pain. Okay, nobody likes that. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that to be true. Nobody wants that to happen, but it's true anyhow, okay? Some things in life you're only gonna learn through pain. And so when the devil opens his mouth and breathes fire in your life, and you wonder where is God and all that, what God is doing is there's some lessons in there that God wants you to learn. There's some, some disciplines God is trying to get you to pick up. There's some habits God is trying to get you to break. There's some things that God is using that pain and that trial and that tribulation to highlight in your life to tell you, you need to do different <laughs> in this area or these areas. So that's why it doesn't destroy you. It didn't destroy Job, but it got him down to nothing. And sometimes we go through trials where we get knocked down to nothing. You, you're out of money, you're out of energy. Sometimes you're out of hope and optimism. Sometimes you're out of friends. Sometimes there's a resulting divorce, there's a breakup, you lose your family, sometimes you lose your job. Sometimes it, sometimes you lose your living quarters. Sometimes it looks like you just get down to nothing, okay? That's the devil. <laughs> That's the devil. Steal, kill, and destroy. That's the devil. So again, you might want to ask, well, you know, what is God doing when all of that is going on? Well, what God was trying to show Job was that Job was self-righteous. Job's great fatal flaw was that he trusted in what he did instead of trusting in God's righteousness. For all Job's morals and ethics, Job thought that it was what he did, his name, that would protect him in life and protect him against the devil. So when the devil came after Job like that and just completely devastated everything that he had, God was trying to teach Job how not to be self-righteous, how not to trust in his own works, how not to trust in his own name. That's what God was trying to teach Job through those terrible trials, that the reason the devil is coming after you and the reason all this is happening and the reason the devil is doing all this is because you think that your morals and your ethics and your name 
is enough to defend you against Satan, against Satan. And yet, no, it's not. No, it's not. So I'm saying that to say that if you've been through a Job-like situation where you just feel like you've just been, been busted down to nothing, you've just been reduced, I thought by to tell you that what God was doing in that trial was teaching you how to stop depending on your thoughts, your ways, your way of doing things, your own righteousness, your own understanding. And God was trying to show you how to depend on him, his way, his righteousness, his name, his blood, his understanding, his wisdom. And sometimes the only way we learn those lessons is in the midst of attack. So I know that can be challenging, but the devil's purpose in the attack is to destroy you, to steal, kill, and destroy. But God's purpose in the attack is to teach you how not to depend on yourself or your ways or your thought patterns or the things that you were doing that weren't right. And the things that Job was doing was thinking that even, even though Job had strong morals and strong ethics, that that's what was going to defend him against the devil. Nope. Okay. So in our situations, in your individual situation, everybody listening to me live and everybody looking at the broadcast, if you've been through hell and high water, the Spirit of God wants to let you know that it's over. But the point of that hell and high water, the devil's point was to try to take you out. But God's point in the midst of all that was to show you how you need to do some things differently. You need to turn from some bad habits, some bad ways, some carnal ways, some fleshly things that you were doing. You need to let that go. And you need to learn how to do what the Lord wants you to do in those areas. You need to trust in him and stop trusting in yourself. Because trusting in yourself is not going to stop the devil. Trusting in yourself is not going to give you victory over Satan. I know we don't like that, but that's because we're full of pride. And we really believe that trusting in our way and trusting in ourselves and trusting in our wisdom and trusting in our thoughts is what's going to give us the victory in life. And it won't. So in the midst of the devil trying to take you out, God is trying to teach you through that awful fiery trial. God is trying to burn some fat off. Burn off the fat of the flesh. Burn off self-dependence. Burn off pride. Burn off your ideas. Burn off uh, trusting in your own merits and learn how to do what the Lord told you to do. Learn how to trust God, okay? And when you do that, when you learn the lesson, okay, then God is going to be able to trust you and double you back everything the devil, everything the devil took away from you. He's going to give you twice as much as you had before. So what does that mean? That means just what it says. Twice as many friends, twice as much money, twice as much, twice as much property. Uh, think about having twice as much love in your relationships. Did you ever think about it like that? Did you ever think about whoever you love now, when you get through this trial, you're going to love them even more? Think about it. Okay, all that is uh, what God wants to do when we've been through hell and high water. So the spirit of God lets us know that that is over. Praise God for that. Um, we need to do some interceding. We need to pray for others because we need to sow into the bank of asking for good fortune, good favor, mercy for others. We need to learn the lesson that, that God was teaching us in the midst of what was going on. And then we can expect for a double return blessing. We can then expect for God to give us back twice as much as we had before. So I'm excited about that. And I hope you're excited about that too. Okay. So believe that and receive that. And the spirit of God says, behold, my people, I am as good as my word. I will give you twice as back as you twice as, twice as much back as you have before. So believe me, receive what I'm saying, expect it begin to walk in it and you'll see me multiply things right in your very eyes, right in front of your very eyes, right in your face. You'll see my hand on all that you say and do, bringing you twice as much as you had before so that you, that you might know that I am a good God and that I am equal to my word, says the spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. All right. Well, that was a blessing to me. I feel encouraged by that. Um, so uh, for those of you that are watching me live, you know, go back and watch the replay. Hello, Destiny. How are you? Uh, I'm just kind of finishing up. I'm sorry I came on at uh, 2.30 today, but I'm still glad to see you, Destiny. 
Destiny Purpose, 1980. Uh, so for those of you uh, that are watching live, uh, go back and watch the replay so you can get the principles. But to give you a recap, the principle is there will come a day and the Spirit of God will let you know where all that fiery trial that the devil put you through is over, number one. Number two, God wants you to intercede. He wants you to pray good favor and good fortune on your friends or whatever he tells you to intercede for because if God will receive your prayer as an intercessor like you did with Job, then you can turn back his wrath on people. You can get mercy and grace and favor on people. And when you do that, you're sowing into your own bank so that when you have sown prayers of mercy, grace, and favor, then when it's your turn, God will reach into that bank and give you mercy, grace, and favor, okay? And then uh, it says that uh, we should learn the lesson that God was trying to teach us to, to, to learn through all that fiery trial. And then when we do that, God will restore to us twice as much as we had before. And we can expect it because God is equal to his word, okay? Now, do you see why we need both the written word of God and we need to exegete the scripture according to the original languages, but we also need the prophetic word of God. We need to hear a ring of word from God. We need to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying in the moment for the day, for the season, for the time. Do you see why you need both? So you hear me say it all the time. There's three levels of word. There's the written word of God, which is the Bible. There's the living word of God, which is Jesus the Christ. Then there's the prophetic word of God, the ring of word, the fresh breathe word of God that comes out of his mouth in the now in the moment that speaks to you specifically in your situation, okay? We need all three to make it in life, okay? Can you see that now? I hope you can see that after today's teaching, all right? So thank you very much. God bless you. I'll uh, be on uh, this Thursday, uh, I believe is my, is second Thursday coming up? Yeah, for uh, the No More Genies broadcast, and then I'll be on next Sunday, my regular time, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time for my live prophetic word, all right? Thank you. God bless you. Uh, uh, follow the principles so you can look forward to that double restoration blessing. Uh, walk in it, believe it, receive it, and I'll see you next time.